Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. How many of y'all know Jesus watches over y'all this afternoon? I said, how many of y'all really know that Jesus is watching over y'all this afternoon? If you know Jesus is watching over, you ought to be on your feet giving God some praise this afternoon. to the First Lady in her absence, to Elder Uzel and Elder Stenbridge and to the deacons. Uh, it's truly an honor and a privilege to come back before you all for the first, second time to bring forth the word. For those of you who have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. I'm going to read the first and second verse following that. You can flip to the fourth chapter. I'll be reading verse 10. And following that, the first chapter, I'll be reading verse 18. When you have it, stood your feet. First Corinthians, second chapter, verses 1 through 2. You have it, say amen. Amen. First Corinthians, the second chapter, verse number one. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. The fourth chapter, verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. The first chapter, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Right. Grab your neighbor by their pretty manicured hands, looking into their nice brown eyes, and let them know that today's subject will be, that's it, that's, that's all. It. I want you all to understand how we got here in 2012. The fundamental faith of the Christian industry is under attack. This is in itself not a new fact, but those who preach the gospel are holding it in suspicion. I don't mean to offend anyone, but it just comes along with the territory. The enemy is after our faith, and let me tell you how he is after our faith. He's after our faith with doubt. I'm going to try to keep it real simple this afternoon. There is an element of doubt that not only blocks what God is trying to do for you now, but is blocking what he has planned for your future. Somebody say, preach black man. Preach black man. Jesus told the disciples and was very curt, crass, and even rude with them and despised them for their unbelief. And it's very bad to be a non-believer believer. Mm. The text tells us in verse 18 that for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, yes. but unto us which are saved, yes. it is the power of God. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's it. Neighbor, yes. that's it. That's all. That's all. Jesus said, he that believe and is baptized shall be saved. Yes. He that believes shall not be damned. So it is not that one point in your life you believe God. But the fact that you continue to believe God, it moves you in a place of divine destiny. And any time that you doubt God, you put a hold on your destiny. For God cannot move in doubt. He said in Romans, the 14th chapter and the 23rd verse, And he that doubteth is damned, and he eat because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Look at your neighbor and say, Doubt is my enemy. Doubt is my enemy. You see, we used to think that life was our enemy. Teach the doubt him. is Teach our him. real enemy. Yes, sir. See, when Jesus, the Jesus papers, the gospel according to Jesus, Judas, uh -huh. the Da Vinci Code, uh -huh. it is to hold in suspicion your That's faith. Right. That's right. The Teach enemy him. wants Teach to explode him. the infrastructure of our faith because it stops you from believing. That's right. He stops the flow of God. And so what he wants you to do is at least hold the word in suspicion. Jesus. When people ask you, do you really believe that everything God says is true? Do you really believe that Jesus died on the cross? 
The enemy is trying to make you doubt yourself <laughs> because my belief is in the word. Jesus. It comes with my faith to grow. Y'all better come on with me. Come to on, see you see, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon by Jonas, uh -huh. I'm going to change your name. Yeah. No longer will it be Simon, right. but it will be Peter. Yeah. Yeah. And Peter, upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But Jesus does not speak to Peter. He speaks to Simon. Because every day the Peters inside of us struggle with Simon. <laughs> Somebody, y'all better come on now. Everything we up and we're trying to win the battle so that the revealed word of God is that captivates our conscience and causes us to make into faith. Yeah. Every day we have to speak to Simon for the spirit lust against wars, right. right. the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. Yes. For the common mind is an enemy to God. Yes. It is important for you all to understand that things born of flesh will always be flesh. Yes. But things which are born of the spirit is always, always spirit. Yes. So don't ever get it twisted. Yes. Because as my grandma used to say, yes. you can't live a day in advance. Right. You got to live this thing day by day. Yes. day, by day. Yes. Every day we get up. You have to make sure that the spirit man sits on the seat of your conscience yes. and say, let God be true. God, God, you see, right. Paul speaks in the fourth chapter uh -huh. because the church core was a very intelligent one. They were associated with thinkers. They were into politics, had a whole lot of philosophers that came through there. They all grew accustomed to certain things. And a man by the name of Apollo seemed to always step up and try to steal the thunder of Paul. Right. You all know how it is when you're the baddest person on the block that somebody bad that comes along and moves you out to the spot. Yeah. The Bible says that Apollo was very eloquent. Uh -huh. It says he was mighty in the scriptures, and it seemed the church core was being wooed and weighed from the apostle Paul. You see, God wants us to have a faith that is regulated by his word, yes. that has constraints. If, I, if the eye can be single, it is full of life. Yes. The problem with the church today is that we are multifaceted and we have too many hidden agendas. Yes. The reason God could use a one-eyed man is because his <laughs> desire was sin. My focus was sin as I stand here today, St. Mark, yes. knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I just want to tell you that that's it. That's, that's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. See, we have come to God with a single focus. But God sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel with wisdom and words. That's it. And that's all. You see, the preaching of the cross is for those that perish foolishness. The world doesn't want us to preach the cross. They want us to preach love. And they want us to talk about positive energy. But they don't want us to preach the cross. So Mark, I'm here to tell you this afternoon. That salvation did not hang on a philosophical negotiation. It did not hang on a philosophical thought. But it hung on the cross. You see, Paul said, when I came to you, uh -huh. I did not come in excellence of speech. Uh -huh. I did not try to come and impress you. Right. But I came determined. You see, I got a whole lot of things that I could do. But every now and then, I'm tempted to prove myself. I'm tempted to prove how intelligent I am. Every now and then, I want to stunt with the big dogs. I want to be remembered as a nice guy. But the cross prohibits me from walking the other circle. Touch somebody and say, I am a believer. I am a believer. So now, if the church is going to experience 55 more years of power, we got to get back in our belief in God. We got to determine in our focus. We got to say, God, I know you. Paul says to them, Look at your name and say, the reason that I am here the reason is because I, I love here. Jesus. I love Jesus. That's it. And that's all. You see, they told me I had to stop doing certain things. They told me I had to follow my calling. And because my love of Jesus Christ was done, that's it. And that's all. I'm about to wrap this thing up this evening. You see, we got to get back with Jesus in the morning. Uh -huh. And it's Jesus in the noon day. Yes, yes. And it's Jesus in the midnight hour. Uh -huh. We got to learn to leave it all at the altar. Uh -huh. I say, preachers, we got to get back to preaching Jesus. Yes. That's it. And that's all. Yes. We can't mix the Christian faith with Buddhism. Uh -huh. We can't mix the Christian faith with Hinduism. Uh -huh. It's got to be Jesus. Jesus. That's it. And that's all. Yes. If we want to see the signs, wonders, and miracles, it's got to be Jesus. Jesus. That's it. And that's all. Uh -huh. If you want to see our young people walking in Christ, you have to bring them up on Jesus. Yes. That's it. That's and it. that's all. That's I say, call me whatever you want to call. Me. Right. Call me narrow-minded. Uh -huh. Call me ignorant. Yeah. But I got to preach Jesus. Yeah. That's it. That's and that's all. Yeah. You see, no other God besides me. Yeah. Jesus was the only one who could bring me out of what I was going yeah. through. Right. Jesus was the only one who could speak peace to my soul. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And that's all. all right. Somebody holler, Jesus. Jesus. That's it. And that's all. all right. Tell your neighbor, it's in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's Jesus. it. And that's all. all right. See, the apostles ran away from being whipped. And they asked Peter, whom shall we obey? Yeah. 